On the way to summer camp are the 112th and 114th Anti-Aircraft Artillery Brigades of California's National Guard. They want you to meet their new member, Private Bill Martin, who might be your son, your brother, or just the fellow down the block. I'm Bill Martin, a new recruit in an anti-aircraft artillery brigade. Right now, I'm on my way to my first National Guard summer camp. I did a lot of thinking before I joined the Guard because a fellow my age is faced with military obligations these days. I had the choice of joining one of the regular military services, take a chance on selective service, or join the California National Guard. Well, I kicked the idea around a bit, talked it over with my family, with some of my pals over at school, and we all agreed that the Guard was the best bet. Especially in my case, I learned that I could meet my military obligation while living at home and attending school. Some of my buddies have other reasons for joining, like getting a full day's pay for attending each two-hour weekly meeting, expenses and 15 days' pay at camp each year. Well, maybe not exactly a vacation, but sure enough, a change in routine. We arrive in Camp Irwin which is near Barstow, California, the heart of the Mojave Desert. I've been told that the 2,300-foot elevation with its cloudless sky makes this camp ideal for artillery training. The neat rows of hutments are laid out with all the care that goes into the planning of a model city. We're assigned living quarters where we're to learn to keep house military style, cooperating with the other fellows in mutual trust and confidence. The next morning, I learned something about close order drill. I learned that basic training in the school of the soldier is necessary in any military organization. Familiarization training with the soldier's weapons, rifle and carbine, is basic to all men in the military, regardless of their special job. Whether you're a cook, baker, truck driver, or artillery man, you learn to know your rifle or carbine. Our instructor carefully goes over each part, explaining its function and assembly. We're taught to clean, adjust, take apart, and put together this weapon over and over until the procedure becomes automatic. Skill and accuracy is taught on the small arms range. Here we learn to shoot straight and fast. What's more, we must learn to hit the target or stay with it until we do. Some of us learn to use special weapons, like the bazooka. This handheld recoilless rocket gun carries the Sunday punch of an artillery piece. Ground fighting weapons, such as the bazooka, come in mighty handy when an enemy ground force unit threaten an anti-aircraft battery. In communications class, we're taught to use and maintain the radio telephone in the field, a vital part of every military operation. The instructor explains the many other phases of communication we're to learn, including line work, installation, and repair. When we've learned to handle ourselves and our weapons, we're ready to work as a team in the firing of the Quad 50. This power-driven 50 caliber multiple machine gun can give enemy aircraft or personnel a bad time, as you will see. Our practice target is a midget, gasoline-driven robot plane. It is radio-controlled from the ground and is launched into the air from a dollar. There she goes. Fire mission is called. The trip. 
tracer bullets placed at intervals in the cartridge belt helps us check our angle of fire. There's a hit. The successful fire mission has its reward, with a little extracurricular duty thrown in, policing up spent shell cases. Not as spectacular, but nevertheless just as important, is the ration breakdown and food distribution. Logistics of food is the science and methods of procuring and maintaining a constant stream of food supplies to the men at the gun. An important factor of this service unit is quality and quantity. Each shipment is carefully inspected. The sheer weight and variety of foodstuffs required to supply even a comparatively small organization would tax the resources of the largest supermarket. The procurement, inspection, Handling and distribution of food is a first-class education in itself. Mess stewards make daily calls to the refrigerated warehouse to receive their perishable foodstuffs. Working up an appetite is no problem here, and Bill Martin is no exception. No men are better fed than our guardsmen. Even in the field, food is hot and well prepared. National Guard training includes mess management. A four-hour school for stewards and cooks is conducted every weekday within each bivouac area. Mess over, the 90 millimeter gun range goes into full swing. A network of cables tie together the guns of the battery with the radar control. Bill Martin, as a member of the 90 millimeter crew, takes part in a direct fire maneuver. The guard's three-year training and promotion program provides an opportunity for a qualified recruit to attend a service school with full pay and grade while learning. Now, let's watch a 90 millimeter gun crew as they prepare for action. A target is selected, and the range and deflection is relayed to the gun crew. The properly fused ammunition is passed on to the gunner. The final check for elevation. It's on its way. The fire mission is a simulated assault of fortification sufficiently in range to permit observation for adjustment of fire by line of sight. Looks like it's right on target. The fire order comes back. Six rounds, fire for effect. interest in radar and having a buddy who operates one made it possible for me to sit in on an aerial fire mission. It was an educational opportunity and I was anxious to learn all I could about this robot eye that was developed during World War II. The maze of cranks and dials and switches bewildered me. I was told that when the target is located it is tracked on a scanning screen then followed until it comes into range. When it is positioned correctly the information is put into a device called the computer. This is then compiled into firing data, which is automatically fed to the gun battery. As the plane tow target becomes visible, the range safety officer checks the readiness of the guns on the line. Corrected range and altitude information on the target is passed on to the gun. It takes teamwork all the way, from field clerks to shell loaders to gun crew. The 
spotters on the range finders follow the action. Spiritual guidance is emphasized in the National Guard program. To help carry out the guardsmen's home customs, chaplain services are provided. Although many of the guardsmen are of different faiths and creeds, there's a chaplain to administer his needs. In this field mass, the significant ritual of the mass is administered. But somewhere else in the field, you'll hear the inspirational hymn of one of the Protestant faiths, or the chant of the Jewish cantor. Compulsory attendance is not required. Some of the fellows like playing ball, others attend picture shows on the base, but for me, it's swimming. Doc gives me a check over before entering the swimming competition arranged by one of the chaplains. As our encampment draws to a close, there comes a big day, payday. I'm oh, sure it's been a little rugged at times, but here am I, fit and tanned, well fed with two enjoyable weeks spent with my buddy. And what's more, I'm being paid for it. The conclusion of the training program brings a review. Assembled before their commanders and guests are California guardsmen to receive honors. In fitting decorations on these guardsmen, California's Adjutant General, Major General Earl M. Jones, also honors all of the men of the 112th and 114th Anti-Aircraft Artillery Brigade. The California National Guard offers many advantages to the young men of military age. Foremost among these is the opportunity to serve his country and state in a patriotic and honorable way without sacrificing his schooling or job or without leaving his home or family except, of course, in cases of grave emergencies as officially proclaimed. The California National Guard also offers the younger veteran the opportunity to continue and develop the special skills and knowledge he acquired in the regular armed forces. There is no better way for a young Californian to meet his military obligation than by joining with his friends and neighbors and becoming a part of his state's great citizen army, your California National Guard.